This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Jeremy Wolf. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Good Neighbor Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy Wolf, and our next guest was actually nominated by a past guest of the show, Michael Cuniff, whom I had an amazing conversation with. He was a great guy, and he thought uh, kindly of our next guest and wanted me to connect with him and have him on. And you may ask, what's in a name? Well, today we're going to find out. I'm here with Terrence Fulton with Work, Strive, Grind. We're going to find out what's in that name, brother. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Thanks for having me, Jeremy. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, man. All right. The pleasure is all ours. And thanks, as always, to our listeners for tuning in to learn more about our great community and the lovely businesses that serve us. So, Terrence, why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about what you guys do over at Work, Strive, Grind. Love the name, man. Love the name. Oh, uh, th- thank you so much. Uh, Work Strive yeah. Grind was uh, started in 2014. The name uh, came up. Uh, I can't take credit for the name. The name came up from the wife. Um, she, <laughs> most she, good things in my most good name. things in my life come yeah. from my wife too. So yeah, um, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, it, it started out as a uh, a real estate holding company. Um, okay. Yeah, people thought it was like a fitness company because at the time I used to do a lot of cardio and stuff. Um, but I just kind of took on the name, took on the meaning. And it's pretty much what it says. Uh, when I asked her what made her come up with that name, she was like, I just thought of everything you were. Like, that's those words symbolizes you. So it, it uh, so it has a special meaning to me uh, because of uh, the way she viewed me at the time. Um, I mean, it, of course, it views me now, but definitely at that particular time. So no, it, it's not really um, nothing else special about it. It was just supposed to be a real estate holding company. I've now made it like the parent company of my other companies now. Uh, so it's like a holding of my other companies that I have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, a little bit cryptic there. Like, what exactly do you do through these companies? Like, okay, you started off as a real estate holding company. So obviously you're in the real estate space. What do you, you yes. do? Real estate investing, you buy and sell properties. Let's dig in a little bit deeper on what okay. your companies are aimed to do and how they help um, various people. Well, when I first started in 2014, it was about, um, Real, uh, renovating properties, flipping houses and stuff like okay. that. Um, I end up end up taking a, a life of its own. Um, I end up uh, in the education space, real estate education space, where I was teaching uh, minorities um, how to get into real estate and how to flip properties and how to build wealth through real estate investing, how to acquire, how to buy and hold, how to submit contracts, things like that, hire contractors, um, and then it then it birthed uh, Beautiful Properties, which is uh, it's a play off my name, Terrence Fulton, Bu, like you know, first part of beauty, T, Terrence Full, F U L, Beautiful Properties, uh, which end up I end up uh, uh, moving that company over to the real estate side, end up uh, moving up uh, Worst Drive Grind, and then I end up launching Ziri's Place, which is an e commerce, my daughter's uh, online store. So it's the holding of those companies. And then after that, when I had rentals, when I had a few rentals, the those rentals would be under Beautiful Properties. And while the holding company was um, Work Strive Grind. The, the true life of an entrepreneur. So going, <laughs> going, yeah. going back to 2014, when you started the holding company, did you have a background in real estate? What was your journey leading up to that? Because and how did you ultimately, I guess, take that leap into this entrepreneurial space that you're in now? I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I've always been an entrepreneur. I just didn't know that word. You know, mm. if you said that word to me in 2003 when I was in high school or something like that, you know, you'd be like, "Oh, you want to become an entrepreneur?" I would have said, "Using these big ass words, <laughs> right?" <laughs> so I didn't know what that was. Um, yeah, it wasn't until I started educating myself. Um, when I realized, uh, of course, the the Bible of it all is rich dad, poor dad, and I and um, I thought I was like Robert Kiyosaki, and I'm like, hold on, so he's from Hawaii, he lives in Vegas, and I'm like, he's like this 60, 70 year old man at the time. I can't, I don't know his age, and then I'm like, why he think just like me? But the way I thought 
I was the only one around me that thought like that. But because I was the only one that thought like that, I thought I was off my rocker and everybody else was right. If that made sense. So, yeah. um, so when I started this journey, um, it was really about just having an out of uh, corporate America, to be honest with you. But it wasn't all these options that people have now. It was only two ways that I knew. That was the stock market and that was real estate investing. Those are the only two. So since it was only two, it made it very simple. It was A or B. So yeah. uh, instead of looking at charts all day and graphs and past performances, I felt like it, it, it was like arithmetic to me. It was a little bit challenging for me to understand it. So I said, well, real estate is something that I see is, is really addition is attraction. You know, maybe I could just go do this. And I literally learned from YouTube and I went to like seminars, courses. I actually ended up buying into a company, buying into like a, a program where it would help accelerate me. Um, and through that, I was able to teach others how to do that called the Hustlers Workshop. I had it at the SLS Brickle um, uh, for about three years. I, I, it was birthed in Starbucks. I was really packed. I had a packed out Starbucks. And um, I moved it to the SLS Brickle in Miami. And that's I, that's when I realized how big it was. Because people would fly, I'd fly in from all across the country to come watch me speak and learn from me. But sometimes you can't see the picture when you're in a frame. Mm. So is it safe to say that Nowadays, kind of your focus is on taking the knowledge that you've acquired throughout your journey and helping to share with others and helping them grow their businesses and investing yes. and things like that. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> All right. What What are some so so What does that look like in terms of these these workshops that you were doing to try to help people? Like, how exactly do you help other people in that space? Well, uh, really, it was just more so about educating them on real estate and, and coming up with strategies and tactics to acquire property. Uh, okay. With little with little capital, so it wasn't the traditional like first time home buyers uh, seminars. Uh, it, it had nothing to do with that. It had everything to do with learning real estate through seeing real estate through an investor eyes, right? Looking for the distressed properties, you know, um, mailers, uh, direct mail, uh, bandit signs, cold calling, you, um, you know, the really the rough and the grind. Um, all the fun, all the fun stuff. Yes. yes Work, drive, grind, that baby. Way. Um, it, but my audience was mostly black, uh, young black people, right? Because uh, uh, just because of the demographics. Uh, it wasn't until it took a life on its own when I started to see people that didn't look like me show up, right? Part of it was the SLS Brickle, right? Because it's now in the, in the community, in a different community. But also, too, it was something that I was somebody that people could relate to because of the way I explain real estate. So I give you an example. Uh, let's say I'm in a room of men, right? And yeah. um, it's just all men, because it's the only way I could pull this off. Um, <laughs> I mean, obviously it was when women there, but I'm saying at times when it was only men in the room, I would correlate real estate to women, right? Because men are usually into, you know, uh, women and money, right? Typically, especially if you're a single guy. So I would break down real estate the way I would break down speaking to a woman, right? So I would break it down to the lowest common denominator to where people can understand and get it. So the, my saying is, like, it's actually easier to get a house under contract than it is to get a woman's number. Yeah. How yeah. so? Sim simply because they're, the person you're looking for is a motivated seller. Right. They looking for you to take on their problem. A woman really don't really need you. She got a lot of options here. You get what I mean? She has oh, a so ton of freaking options. Speak, speak for yourself, man. Yeah. They all, they all need me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's good stuff. Yeah. So, so, so you mentioned stuff I brought up, but I can't. I, I won't say it here, though. But it was. Hey, man. You got free reign here. This is. Uh... Yeah, yeah. So not necessarily a, a PG show. We try to keep it keep it light and friendly, but you know, we go where we go where it may, might take us. So you mentioned that your your wife was responsible for the name. Mm -hmm. So, as with most of my guests and most people on this planet, family is usually pretty important for our journeys. Right, it's usually the driving force behind what we do. I myself, I have a ten year old son, twelve year old daughter. It's really Amazing. really everything to me. Amazing. Tell tell us a little bit about your family. I have a 17 year old son. Um, I have a four year old daughter. Uh, the four year old daughter is with, with uh, 
my, my woman that I'm, I'm my wife I'm with um, uh, and I have a, a 20 year old daughter stepdaughter so it's, it's her daughter my son and we have a child together um, or whatever just you know just so you can understand the dynamics but it's, it's, it's all uh, uh, daughter sons um, here um, but yes yeah, it's, it's very important um, but really I mean, she, she was somebody that motivated me to want to, I was already motivated, but it was just, especially if you have a beautiful woman, you know, you definitely want to make sure she's taken care of and you want to do the best that you can for her. And uh, she would give you back that same energy. If you take care of her, she'll take care of you. So, and then uh, with family, who, who doesn't want to leave a legacy? You know, mm -hmm. uh, who doesn't want their family to uh, experience a better life, even if it's a, a little bit better, you know, I think most of us on this planet um, are doing what we can to make a better life for our kids. Some people won't be rich. Some people won't be wealthy. But I'm sure most people would be better off than they were growing up, usually. That's usually how it goes. Yeah. Not always the most important thing. That's the, one of the things I'm I'm learning as I traverse through this magical journey of life, being rich and wealthy and all that good stuff. Like I, I mm -hmm. man, I'd much rather just be at peace and happy and okay with what I have than to be mm -hmm. completely stressed out, overwhelmed, miserable, and then be showered with material things, you know? So the older I get, I, I try to detach more and more mm -hmm. from that and really focus on the present. And like any other human being, I, I, I slip up from time to time. I was with my daughter yesterday and uh, I, I actually, she's home for the summer. I gave her a little project to do. I had something for work to do and I, I had her do it. And she she wasn't doing it quite the way that I wanted it done. And I, I, I kind of, I felt like she was kind of doing a half-assed job on it. Like mm -hmm. she had never her mind into it or heart into it. And I got, a, I got a little bit overwhelmed and frustrated and I didn't handle the situation very well with her. And I got a little bit short and I took the project away and I came to my senses a little bit while, a little while later. And I realized that that interaction was no good. And I, I, I went and talked to her and sat down with her, apologized for how I, how I behaved and explained how I should have done things differently and how I'm going to fix the situation. So like something like that would never have happened five, six, seven years ago. That's right. That I'm, as I come into my I'm own about to say, we, spiritually. We, never, we didn't grow up like that at all. At least I did. Yeah. Nah, okay. nah, nah, because it, it wasn't no apologizing to a child. It, that was mean, and the parent was uh, admitting they were wrong. That didn't happen, at least for me growing <laughs> up. But they, it, the parents didn't never admit when they were wrong. Yeah, I, th I think it's important, right? Yeah. To, to have honest conversations with your children and let them know that we make mistakes too. And it shows them that you could do better. It shows them to take responsibility when things don't go well. I, I often do that if I, if I lose my temper or if something goes not how I let you know, I reflect on it and then sit down with them later. I think it's, it's important mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so you, you, you mentioned, did you say 20 year old daughter and 17 year old son? Yes. Did I get that right? Okay. Yes. So you gotta give me, you gotta give me some, some tricks of the trade, some tips here. I got, like I said, 12 year old daughter, 10 year old son. That's a similar spread. Like mm -hmm. what, what am I in store for as the kids move through up into high school and everything. What, what, what's well, yeah, uh, for me, um, um, I, I think that my son is more a little bit laid back. Um, he has his moments as well, but he's pretty lazy going. My daughter, uh, you know, you have to navigate the teenage years. They start liking boys. Boys start liking them. At least, you know, at least you start noticing it. Yeah. And then. Um, I'm noticing. You know, having She's to navigate that. <laughs> and then, you know, and, and I'm not sure, you know, um, remember, like, I'm a step parent in a sense, right? So even I've been in her life since she was three, but I'm still a step parent. So it's still that fine line for me that I I still struggle with to this day, yeah. About like uh, what is to be said and what should I allow, you know, uh, like let go and let maybe the, the biological handle. You know what I mean? At least at least for me, it's mental gymnastics in a sense. Yeah. But um, you know, to me that was more sort of the toughest part because. To me, I, like I told her one day, I was like, nobody will ever be good enough for you, to me. You know what I mean? I want you to, uh, you know, I have my own expectations, but I have to allow, you know, the, the, the thing is you have to allow them to live and make mistakes. And you try to catch it before they make uh, mistakes or when you see it, you, it's kind of like our parents have been there, done that. Mm. But I have to allow it to go and transpire and then, you know, uh, and then show up like a first responder in a sense, 
Yeah. You get what I mean? You don't show up to the shootout. You have to wait till it's over. And then you have to respond in a sense. Like, so yeah. I had to go drastic with it, but that was what came to my mind in a sense. And my son, you know, same thing, helping them navigate, uh, um, you know, uh, liking girls, trying to figure out what's important to him, you know, um, what he wants to do with his life, keep him on track, keep him disciplined, you know, and it's really the parenting with the, the son and daughter is a little bit different. I always tell people that. Yeah. Um, because I have to be a little bit tougher on him, you know, um, help him more accountable. Um, I know my daughter accountable too, but you know, he's, he's going to be the man. He's going to be somebody's husband one day, you know, and I have to often tell him like, Look, man, um, as tough as it is, man, people are results based. They don't care about excuses. Um, so just try to get it done, but also try not to put a lot of pressure on him as well. Neither one of them, actually. Yeah. Yeah. We're often defined by our dif- most difficult experiences in life and not, not mm. in a bad way, right? I'm talking about the types of experiences that you go through where in the moment, it seems like the end of the world. It seems like the walls are closing in. But with some perspective, many years later, looking back at it, you kind of pull from that and say, you know, I'm grateful for having experienced that. Looking back throughout your journey, is there mm-hmm. something that comes to mind, a life hardship, a challenge, something you struggled with along the way that you look back at as a either a defining moment or something that you've drawn inspiration from? Um, I'm going to be, uh, be honest. Uh, when I first started this journey in 2014, I quit my job 2016. Um, there's not a lot of things I would have did differently. I always did what was best for the moment. So one of those things, when I was flipping properties, I got them for 100000 I sold it for two fifty. Now they probably 400 now. You know, so you look back at those moments like, damn, if I would have just held on for a few years. Would have, could have, should have. Yeah, but I often just check myself. I, I needed the money at the time. I needed to to get to the next property, you know, so I did what the situation called for. Yep. Um, also, you know, building the correct team around you. Um, I always, I'm going to say I struggle with that. I'm pretty good with defining, with getting people on my team. The thing was, I used to always want to make people bosses. I always wanted to empower people. And I never really uh, allowed people to just stay where they are, right? Which can be challenging because I want the best out of you, but sometimes their best is what they're get, actually giving you. And sometimes they could either run people away or they want to branch off and do their own thing. You know, so I was like, damn, I wonder how some of these companies keep people 27 years. Like, you know, even though as an employee, I always look at why are you, why haven't you moved up? But from a business perspective, I'm like, that, that's, that'd be perfect to keep somebody right there comfortable I don't know what the magic is. I'm still trying to find that magic just to keep people where they are and keep them just motivated to come to work every day. You know, even if they don't do nothing extraordinary, just be consistent with the work to keep the doors open, you know, in a sense. So, but, you know, uh, when people see um, the potential, their, their potential, you know, which I love as well, but that also comes with them flourishing and having to, you know, step out on faith and do their own thing. So it is empowering, but, at the same time, shit, I want you to grow my company as well. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Amen, brother. <laughs> what what would be, I guess, one, one thing you'd like to leave our listeners with, whether it's about the business or just a piece of life wisdom, what comes to mind? Maybe, maybe again, one thing to leave them with. Um, don't let the struggles define you. Um, when... When it gets really tough, you're not less than, you know, um, uh, you're, you're not less than. Uh, you, you still have to walk, talk. You still get, man, this is a this is a process you have to be very delusional. You have to be really hung up on yourself. You, you got to think you're Did you say shit. delusional? Yes, definitely. I, dude, 100% agree with that. that. That Like anybody who's ever become great at anything started yes. off by being delusional. Yes. Yeah. If you're going to be the best at something – you're going to have people around you that say, oh, you're crazy. And they're going to try to put you down. You really have to have that, that, that almost delusional belief in yourself. And I think every, everybody has within them mm-hmm. the potential for greatness with something. And so many people live their whole lives without tapping in to that true potential for whatever reason. Maybe they're afraid of getting criticized. Maybe they're afraid mm-hmm. of this or that. All this bullshit, all these walls we construct. And you get in your own way. 
and, and you don't make the fullest of your life. And, and that's it, it, it ain't easy, obviously. But if it was easy, it wouldn't be beautiful. It's part of yeah. The, I, I, part I of would the I would agree. I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. And get yeah, around sure. people that's um, that's where you want to be. You know, I think yeah. I did a great job of that uh, by getting around people like Dukes, uh, Michael. You know how how we met. You know, just being around high level people, high level individuals, and taking and learning from them. Yep, it's not that's where you kind of fast track this process. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent there. Anybody who's listening that'd like to reach out and connect with you, maybe chat with you, learn a little bit more, how can they do that, brother? Uh, work Strive Grind on TikTok, Work Strive Grind on Instagram. Uh, it's Terrence Fulton on Facebook because obviously I made my Facebook way before I started. I think that's before I started my company. Yeah, it had to be. Right. Um, so it's, it's Terrence with an E, not an A. I always tell people two R's and an E, not uh, R R A. Uh, Terrence Fulton on Facebook, but everything else is Work Strive Grind. Usually I tell people just go over to Instagram, scroll all the way down, like dreads and gold teeth. I had 16 gold teeth, eight to the top, eight to the bottom. You couldn't even see these whites. And I had long dreads, man. So um, I definitely transformed my life. I transformed everything, you know, my circle, my environment, everything. I was committed to this process and whatever it fucking took, I, I was willing to do. Yeah. I want to see that picture with the dreads and the gold teeth. Oh, man. That, it, it, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. I have it here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, where is it? Oh, wow. Yeah. Quite the transformation. Yeah. I'm going the other way. I'm growing my hair out and I'm looking to get some gold teeth. Uh, <laughs> I, should, I still have them. I still have the teeth. Oh yeah, Save I, I don't wear them. I've been worn them in years, but that's you know, funny, but man. that's how much I was committed to this process. Is yeah, you know, I was willing to change any any and everything about me. Right on, man. We're gonna. I'm gonna put a link in the description below to all your contact information. So if anybody would like to reach out, they can do so. Terrence, thanks Thank for joining so us, much. man. This is fun. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Thanks, as always, to our listeners for tuning in, and we will catch everyone on the next episode of the Good Neighbor Podcast. Everyone take care. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast, Cooper City. To nominate your favorite local business to be featured on the show, go to gnpcoopercity.com. That's gnpcoopercity.com, or call 954 231 3170.